Okay, welcome back. So, last time we looked at uh, permutations and combinations. So, I, I just want to recall the formula here. So, N C R. So, uh, let me just mention one other thing. Sometimes, more commonly, this is denoted N R within bracket like this and pronounced N choose R. So, this is this again uh, notation which is fairly common. So, this is n factorial divided by the product of these two factorials and this formula holds for any n, well what does it hold for? So, here really uh, this is let us say n is at least uh, 1, r is a number between 0 and n. So, that is the usual, um, those are the usual ranges of n and r which appear when we try and use this for counting problems. Now, so of course, if you choose r equal to 0, r factorial 0 that is 0 factorial will appear. So, 0 factorial is the convention for 0 factorial is that it is 1. So, this is the convention. So, observe this had in fact occurred earlier when we talked about Taylor polynomials and so on. So, 0 factorial is 1 and so of course, here what let us sort of try and uh, um, rewrite this formula as follows. So, if you sort of cancel off the, the n minus r factorial with the n factorial. So, this is the product of all numbers from 1 to n minus r and this is the product of all numbers from 1 to n. So, what you will get will be the terms which are which do not cancel out when you try and cancel these off is n, n minus 1, n minus 2 all the way till the number just after n minus r. So, that is this one n minus r plus 1 and the r factorial remains the same. Okay. So, that is of course, just an equivalent way of uh, writing this formula here, but now we observe that the numerator here is a product of well it is n, n minus 1, n minus 2 and so on are consecutive numbers. So, what is in the numerator here? So, these are all consecutive numbers. <coughs> they are all consecutive integers starting with n right, and going downwards. Now, and how many of them are there? Well, there are r consecutive integers. So, this is a list of r consecutive integers in the numerator and what is on the bottom is r factorial. So, since n choose r, so here is sort of a nice corollary to this fact here. So, recall n choose r is of course, the number of ways of picking r numbers out of n numbers. So, since this is the number of ways of something or the other, number of ways of picking r numbers out of n numbers, so it does not really matter what it is, whatever this is, this is surely an integer. In fact, it is a positive integer right? or a non-negative integer at least. So, n choose r is certainly an integer that much is clear because it of the interpretation that it is a number of ways of doing something. Whereas, on the other side what you have is a product of r consecutive integers. So, observe that uh, a, a product of r consecutive integers starting with, with any number n can always be thought of as really being n choose r. Okay. So, here is sort of a corollary to this fact since n choose r is an integer, uh, we conclude that the product of r consecutive integers is always divisible, is always a multiple of r factorial. It, it must be an exact multiple. <coughs> okay, you take any r integers, the product is always going to be the r consecutive integers their product will always be divisible by r factorial okay and of course it's you know i it's not strictly something that you can see in just uh, instantly from here because of course n is assumed to be a positive integer that at least r and so on but uh, you should be able to convince yourself that it's in fact true as stated that even if n is smaller than r the product of r consecutive integers starting with n downwards will still be divisible by r factorial. In that case, it will actually be the product will be a 0. 
Similarly, if, if n is a negative number, it is still true that the product of r of a consecutive number starting from n downwards will still be divisible by r factorial. Okay. So, this is sort of the, the nice fact, it is somewhat surprising that something like this is true if you know unless one is sort of looking at this context it is uh, it is somewhat surprising I would say. So, for example, 47 choose 5 is the product of 5 numbers 47, 46, 45, 44, 43 and the claim is that this product is always divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 the product of 5 factorial I mean the, the number 5 factorial and to see why it is divisible. So, let us see where the cancellations will occur. For instance, uh, the 5 cancels the 45 leaving us with a 9. Uh, let us see what else will go. The 4 cancels 44 giving you 11. Uh, there is a 3 which will cancel off the 9 gives a 3 and I guess the 2 can cancel off well the 46 give you a 23. So, observe the final answer after all these cancellations is 47 into 23 into 3 into 11 into 43. So, this is 3, 11 into 23 into 43 into 47, okay, which is certainly an integer, but it is kind of a priori a little surprising that uh, there will always be such exact cancellation. Okay, so, now let us do the following since we sort of talked about polynomials. just before this. So, here is a polynomial version of the, the number of combinations. So, what do I mean by that? Let us do the following. Let us replace the integer n by the variable x. In the formula for n choose r. So, what do I mean by that? Let us give this a name. Let us define the quantity. So, uh, I want to start from this definition of n choose r and what I want to do is, is sort of something like define x choose r where x is some playing the role of n. So, I am going to define a, a quantity x into x minus 1 into x minus 2 till x minus r plus 1. So, let us define x times x minus 1 x minus 2, x minus r plus 1 divided by r factorial. So, what is this? Well, it is a polynomial in x. So, let me call it p of x and it is a polynomial of what degree? Well, there are exactly r terms in the numerator, right. Recall there were in fact r consecutive integers if you wish. So, this is actually a polynomial of degree r and what are the choices of r? Let us define for r greater than equal to 0. So, you take any r greater than equal to 0 and define the following polynomial p r of x to be just x into x minus 1 x minus 2 till x minus r plus 1 divided by r factorial. So, what are the various properties? So, let us just see what, what good this is. So, the first property of course, which I already said is that the degree of p r of x is exactly r. So, that is more or less clear. Further, so what is p 0 of x for instance, so just the, the border case, if you put r equal to 0, then you want to think of this as really being 1. So, there are sort of, it is an empty product on the numerator, there are not any terms and the denominator is, is of course, 0 factor. So, this is sort of like n choose 0 if you wish. So, p 0 of x is just the constant polynomial 1 which of course, has degree 0 that is uh, as we want it to be. Now, of course, what is the whole point of defining this new polynomial here? If you substitute an integer or a natural number for, for x, what this gives you is exactly n choose r okay, for n a natural number let us say n greater than equal to 1. Okay. So, it is just a polynomial which when you plug in x to be an integer, it, it gives you back the, the you know the usual function n choose r. Well, so in particular what does it mean? It says that this polynomial has the very nice property that when you plug in, so here is the fourth property, if 
you take the polynomial p r and you plug in an integer, the answer is an integer. Okay. And well proof, we just sort of saw what happens when n is greater than or equal to 0 or n at least 1. So, observe that p r if you plug in. Uh, so, let us just take r at least 1. So, let us just do this. So, let r be at least 1 because if r is 0 then p r is just the constant polynomial 1 which satisfies this property. So, if r is at least 1 then let us look at. So, p r of n is the following. So, there various possibilities if n is at least 1 then this is just what we were calling n choose r. So, that is surely an integer. If uh, n is 0 then by definition if you plug in 0 into this polynomial. So, observe p r of x is just x into x minus 1 into dot dot dot. So, there is an x in front if you put n equal to 0 of course, I mean if you put x equal to 0 this is just going to become a 0 provided r is at least a 1. And so, in order to finish this uh, proof of this assertion you need to worry about what happens if n is negative. Right. So, let us just see. So, this is if you plug in p r of n. So, let us write n as minus m where m is now positive and let us see what happens when you plug in a negative number into x in place of x. This is x into x minus 1 x minus 2 till x minus r plus 1 divided by r factor. So, the numbers on top are all, uh, are all negative numbers from minus m downwards, but we can just pull out a negative sign from each of these and write it as minus 1 power r and then these now become m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 till m plus r minus 1. So, let me write the highest term first which is this guy m plus r minus 1 m plus r minus 2 and so on a decreasing sequence which finally ends at m divided by r factor. So, in other words p r of minus m is nothing but minus 1 power r times an expression more or less of the same form except this is now the same polynomial p r evaluated at m plus r minus 1. Okay. So, this is just so let me write out the answer it is minus 1 power r times the polynomial p r, but evaluated at a different point which is m plus r m minus let us see m plus r minus 1. And what is m? Ah, I should worry about that m was actually minus n here. So, let me just substitute in place of m let me also put a minus n here. So, this is minus n plus r minus 1. Okay. But of course, the precise form does not matter all we are worried about right now is in proving that p r of n is an integer provided n is an integer okay. and that is now true because p r of a negative number is just some plus or minus times well again uh, this is now a positive number times p r of a positive number which we know already to be in it, to be an integer okay. So, we are we are done with the proof of this that p r has this property. So, observe this is exactly the uh, the question we posed earlier when we talked about polynomials. So, recall we talked about real valued and integer valued polynomials and for real valued polynomials we we obtained a criterion said that a polynomial which takes real values when you plug in real numbers for x such a polynomial must have real coefficients there is no other way out. Whereas, if you had a polynomial which takes integer values uh, when you put x an integer need not have that property. It could happen that uh, it does not have integer coefficients and we looked at one example back there which is x into x minus 1 by 2. right? But, so observe the, the example uh, we had back when we were talking about integer valued polynomials. So, back then I have given you an example of the polynomial x times x minus 1 by 2, but observe that is in this new notation that is what we are calling uh, p 2 of x. It is just sort of like x choose 2 right and this polynomial as we are now seeing has sort of generalizations you can look at p r of x for every r 
So, you can look at x into x minus 1 into x minus 2 divided by 3 factorial and so on. And each of these polynomials would have the same property that if you put x an integer, the answer will be an integer, but the coefficients are not integers. For example, the here the, the coefficient is a 2, I mean it is a half. Similarly, if you take p r of x in general, the coefficients will involve a 1 over r factorial. So, clearly they are not integers. Okay. So, now uh, nevertheless there is something very nice that one can say about these which is the following. So, observe the, the key property, one of the key properties I mentioned is that the sequence p r of x has one polynomial of each degree okay. and this is a very, very important property. This occurred uh, back when you were talking about polynomials when we looked at the Chebyshev and the Legendre polynomials and so on. Now, here p r of x is again a polynomial of, of the same kind. So, the sequence of polynomials p 0, p 1, p 2 and so on they have degree 0, 1, 2, 3 etcetera. So, the key principle that we talked about back then was the following that any polynomial can be written as a linear combination of such polynomials. So, recall the principle we talked about earlier that suppose f of x is any polynomial let us say of degree at most d. then f can be written in the following fashion, then f of x can be written as some constant times p 0 of x plus some other constant possibly times p 1 of x and so on till some constant times p b of x for some constants which you know most generally speaking there could be some complex numbers for some complex numbers. C0, C1, C2 and so on okay. because this follows from the fact that the p i's are 1 in each degree. Okay. Now, comes the, the key point. Suppose we want to look back on our earlier problem in polynomials which is suppose f is a polynomial which takes integer values for integer choices of x. So, suppose we knew further the following that if f of x or let us call it if f of uh, n okay, I will just use as if f of x is an integer whenever x is an integer let us say that is the additional property of f what we are calling integer valued polynomials then what can you say about these constants that is now the question question if this property is, is known then what what about the c i's what can we say about the c i's does it force some nice property on the c i's. So, let us let us now compute the claim is in fact the c i's will all have to be integers if f has this property ok. So, I am just going to calculate so observe that so here is the here is the key calculation if you plug in 0 for x, we plug in 1 for x, we plug in 2 for x and so on and then we see what happens to the right hand side. Okay. So, let us imagine what happens when you plug in uh, let us say x equal to 0. So, observe that p 0, so let us just recall the first few polynomials p 0 of x was just the polynomial 1, p 1 of x by definition would be x p 2 of x will have x, but it will also have x minus 1. I will write just one more p 3 of x will have x, x minus 1, x minus 2 and so on. So, if you plug in x equal to 0, what is going to happen is well all these polynomials from p 1, p 2, p 3 downwards every one of them will vanish at x equal to 0. Okay. So, all these everything here starting from p 1 onwards this will become 0 when x equal to 0, 0 at. Now, when you plug in x equal to 1 similarly p 2 onwards p 2 is 0, p 3 is 0 and so on. So, everything from p 2 onwards this is 0 
at x equal to 1. Similarly, p 3 onwards will vanish at x equal to 2. So, these will be 0 and so on. Okay. So, they are all 0 from some point onwards. So, f of 0 for example, is only going to be c 0 times p 0 of x, p 0 is just 1. Similarly, f of 1 is going to be the following p 2 onwards there is no contribution, there is only a contribution from p 0 which is c 0 plus as a contribution from p 1. So, if you put x equal to 1, this is just a 1. Similarly, if I put x equals 2, I will get c 0, 2 c 1 plus c 2 and so on. So, if you keep going down, if you plug in f d for x, well here is what it becomes, I get c 0 plus d choose 1. So, I am now going to the other notation for combinations d c d c 1 if you wish times c 1 plus d c 2 times c 2 so on till the final coefficient will occur with. So, the final c d occurs with coefficient d choose d. Okay. So, what you get is a set of equations like this when you plug in uh, 0 1 2 3 and so on for x. Now, ob observe that 0, 1, 2, 3 are all integers. So, f being an integer valued polynomial, when you plug in 0, this of course, f 0 is an integer, f 1 is an integer, f 2 is an integer and so on. So, the left hand sides are all known to be integers. That is the given hypothesis on the function f. They are all known to be in z. Now, from that, let us see what the conclusions are. Since f of 0 is an integer, it tells you c 0 is of course, an integer. So, let us see. So, c 0 is, is known to be now an integer. So, c 0 is okay. f of 1 is an integer. So, c 0 plus c 1 is an integer, but let us see c 0 is already an integer. So, I will just box all occurrences of c 0, it is already known to be an integer. Now, c 0 plus c 1 is an integer that tells me that c 1 is also an integer. <coughs> so, that is known now in the second step that c 1 is an integer. So, c 1 is an integer of course, means 2 times c 1 is an integer. So, all of these occurrences of c 1 they are all integers. Now, in the next step this and this are integers I mean the, the sum of these three terms is an integer, the first two terms are integers. So, of course, the third term is also an integer. So, c 2 is also an integer for the same reason and so on. So, all occurrences of c 2 are integers and you keep going in the next step you can conclude that c 3 is an integer, c 4 is an integer and so on. In the very last step d choose d is just a 1. So, this is just a 1 here. So, in this sum all terms except the very last term all of them would have been proved to be integers until this step and the full sum is known to be an integer. So, you will therefore, conclude that c d is also an integer. Okay, so, this is sort of an inductive argument you proceed one step at a time and conclude that all these constants are in fact integers. So, here is the conclusion finally. So, what, what do we what can we say about the c i? So, let us come back and answer this question. If f is known to be an integer valued polynomial, then what do we know about these constant c i s? The conclusion is that the c i s are themselves integers. So, here is the full answer to that question what can you say about integer valued polynomials? Well, they are integer combinations, integer linear combinations of these special polynomials p 0, p 1, p 2 and so on. Okay. So, these, these polynomials p 0, p 1, p 2 may not have integer coefficients no doubt, they are somehow special polynomials, but you when you write f as a combination of those special polynomials, the coefficients you end up obtaining are all integers. Okay, so, it is what is what you would call an integer linear combination of these polynomials p 0, p 1 and so on. Okay, so, next time we will talk about combinations with repetitions which is uh, just slightly more complicated than talking about the problem of combinations itself.